Cassie. Welcome to the Ambitious Tribe podcast. In this episode, we are celebrating World Meditation Day. And I thought, how else can we celebrate it? I've invited a good friend, a client, and our self-proclaimed godmother. She has no choice. I'm just going to say that out loud. The co-founder of Yoga Plus <laughs> <laughs> to guide us through the process of meditation, mindfulness meditation. And may it also influence you if you haven't done it yet or you're not into it yet or you haven't been introduced to it yet and encourage you to have this practice incorporated into your daily lives. Now, this special guest of ours has combined experience in management, entrepreneurship, yoga, mindfulness, and energy healing, supporting business leaders to lead with consciousness and compassion with the aim to support people to enjoy happy and to enjoy life and have a happy, healthy life, right? So with over 30 years of management experience, when you know I met her and she told us about her story, she is actually the real life the devil wears Prada as what they say because she was one of the first bosses in the IT industry but 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 she has transitioned had that paradigm shift and which led her to kindness and the desire that led her to the path of mindfulness it's such an honor to have her with us and I'm grateful to have her here not only has she been the most supportive and also allowed me and my husband to thrive she's been the part you know been part of the manifestation I vocally expressed she knows my dreams and my ambitions up until this day we confide with. So dear, driven, and ambitious, we have Search Inside Yourself Leadership Certified Teacher, Yogini, the girl boss and herself, Dina Salonga. Hi, Miss D. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Cassie. It's an honor to be a guest on your Ambitious Tribe podcast. Thank <laughs> you for inviting me. And I think on such a, a very auspicious occasion. So I'll be happy to share. Uh, what I know, what I practice, and hopefully, you know, uh, leaders like me, entrepreneurs like me can also learn something from it. Yeah, and I heard you relocated in Ilocosur since the pandemic hit. How is it and how are you? <laughs> yeah, so um, July last year was when I relocated to Cervantes, Ilocosur. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not in you know, in my wildest dream, did I dream of living in Manila and living in, mm -hmm. in a remote town, right? Mm -hmm. But um, when the pandemic struck, uh, we had to shift our business model with Yoga Plus and uh, we closed our studios. I think we decided early on that uh, we would close the physical studios and focus on running our business online. And that happened uh May, you know, so end of May, we were already closed and operating online fully. And uh, so just the backstory before mm -hmm. um, the pandemic happened, I was in a 10-day retreat here in Ilocos. Oh. Um, and this retreat was called the Balanced Life Retreat. Okay. And then um, when the pandemic happened, sometime around June, my friend who invited me to uh, come to the retreat, come for the retreat said that um, there is an offer to uh, have to accept residents in the village where we had our retreat. It is an ashram. So I'm sure you are familiar with yes. what an ashram is, right? So yes. wow. there was an offer for uh, residents, for residency, for people who are on a spiritual path. And so I said, mm, that was very tempting because, you know, I didn't have any reason to be in Makati anymore yeah. and living yeah. in a condo yeah. so I said okay but you know it's a major step to take right mm. so I said to my friend oh but I cannot live without my sister and my mother my mother was 88 then mm. and uh so she came back and said uh master said you can come with your mother with her caregiver or we can find a caregiver for you here and your sister oh. so I didn't have an excuse. Mm -hmm. And so I asked my sister, I told her, this is the invitation, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister was the first one who actually uh, said yes. I was still not decided. And she said, I will trust you with my life. And so we packed our bags. In three weeks, we had relocated to Ilocos. Oh. And uh, we wow. left July 3. And um, I came back in October. Uh, with the intention to pack my bags and sell my condo. And um, somebody bought it while I was in Manila. So within a wow. month, I was able to sell my condo and uh, pack my stuff and, um, you know, 
put them in some storage with a friend's house. And yeah, so I'm here, I'm here for good. Wow. And that, so if so that was now, yeah, yeah. It's okay, go ahead. Uh, so this is now part of my, my like version three. So you talked about the Devil Wears Prada days, right? So my early corporate days was my version <laughs> one. And then I went to yoga wellness, which was my version two. And now I am pursuing a path of uh, enlightenment, hopefully, yeah, self-mastery and to moving towards enlightenment as my version three. Wow, that is just serendipitous. I mean, I think if it wasn't a sign of, you know, <laughs> of the universe, it, I mean, a month, that is no joke. And in a pandemic, right, having to sell it also, I mean, yep. right away. Wow, wow, wow. So how is your sister and your mom now? I mean, has it been, I mean, the hospitals, is, in, is there a hospital nearby or how is it? Yeah. Well, that was one of the concerns, but you know, in the village, because this is not only a learning village, but also a healing village. We are surrounded by energy healers. Yes. And uh, yeah, so they are taking very good care of Nanai. Uh, there's a regional hospital in the mountain province, which is like 40 minutes away. Um, yeah, so we're okay. My sister is thriving, much to the surprise of her friends who gave her a two or three month uh, uh, quota, you know, like, oh, she's not going to last longer than three months. She's going to be back in Manila. Uh -huh. She's still here. <laughs> so, in a year. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. So I think it, it's, it's alignment and guidance, you know, when, when things are aligned and you are properly guided and it happens even with uh, minimal planning mm. and and you will notice that um, you know obstructions and things that will prevent your plans from materializing will just you know they'll just fall to the sidelines and you yeah. will be you will be able to achieve it so it's like what what is meant to be is meant to be and just it just happens for you not to you so that's that's a beautiful unfolding story yeah, but master said yeah, but the master said, who's our, our spiritual mentor here in the ashram said, you also have to be entitled. So you know, things happen to you only if you are entitled. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you have created enough good, you know, that you have done enough good to, to uh, deserve more good to happen in your life. Wow, that's a nice way to put the, the entire life happens for you rather than to you. So that's I think that's a good way of mm -hmm. saying that. Thank you for that perception. Huh? That's so true. So entitlement. <laughs> what does entitlement mean um, for for you now? I mean, you've mentioned that again, I mean, in the world where everybody's saying, you know, hey, you know what? It, life happens for you because it's something that is within alignment. But in this case, well, this is the first time that I really actually have heard that it's to you. So to you is meaning meaning it's entitled. So what does entitlement really mean in the spiritual entrepreneur or spiritual world? Yeah, what, what um, it, it just means that you have done enough work to... Uh, um, maybe negate whatever karmic obligations you have. So you have worked on that by doing enough good. And uh, you, you are now entitled to proceed to the next phase of your spiritual development. It's like... Um, so, I mean, it... it yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it's not handed to you. You have to work for it because you did something, then you deserve this. So yeah. that's really what... what the spiritual entitlement, the context of entitlement is in, from that perspective. So you don't just deserve, you know, something because it's just you, but you worked for it. You worked hard for it. You went through maybe a period of suffering and you also uh, shifted, you know, you did something to improve yourself, to, to clean up, you know, all the bad stuff that you've done whether in this life or in a previous life, you're continuing to work on uh, your family, you know, your relationships, making sure that they are good, you know, and, and so you deserve a certain kind of entitlement. So that's, that's just what it is. So happy to learn that there is an ashram actually in the Philippines where we can go to. 
Um, honestly, this past few weeks, um, I have been on hiatus as well, Miss D. Um, it's been, a big, I think, eight or nine weeks that I haven't really been working as much as I used to. I mean, I have this tendency of being a workaholic, although although I have improved a lot um, because I'm, I'm a firm believer of work-life integration rather than the work-life balance. I figured there's no way mm-hmm. to do balancing anyway, right? Mm-hmm. But as I went through that hiatus, it was really a choice that I took. I mean, I... You're right. I mean, if you work hard to for it, you designed it in such a way that it's going to support you and you find a little bit more contentment towards what you have designed with the help, of course, of the universe also or with God or your spiritual or whatever. I mean, you guys believe in. Anyway, um, I have been tapping into my dharma as well the past few weeks and I have been questioning on what is my existence? Why am we here? I mean, I'm sure, you know, I mean, a lot of people would always say that, especially in the world of entrepreneurship now that everybody's like, who is it that you help? Why do you help? What is your why? And all those things. But eventually I learned that, you know, I think we are all drowning in the world of, we should have this certain and not entitlement, certain achievement to call ourselves as successful. But in truth, success means happiness and contentment. And I've been questioning myself too in terms of my dharma, what is dharma? And good news, I'm taking my teacher training, by the way, um, (laughs) to be led by India. Yeah, finally. But I wanted to... Thank you. But I wanted to align it with you too, uh, because I mean, I've been very vocal with, you know, a lot of my ambitious plans with you. You've... Hi. Anyway, I'm not going to dive into that, but I just wanted to align with you in terms of the Dharma, right? Dharma is passion and purpose. Now that you are in an ashram, what is it like being in an ashram? And have you also been giving yourself a little bit more questioning on why are you here? Why are you there? What is this version three? And can you walk us through that? Yeah. Um, Based on master's teachings and what I have learned about it so far, you know, I've only been here less than a year. I have not studied as much with him as the other residents here. Um, what I understand of Dharma is it is your, it is the, what are, what is your part in the entire divine plan? You know, what are you doing to contribute to what's going to happen eventually as part of the divine plan? So essentially, this is what your soul was meant to do. So it is, a, you're talking about soul's purpose. Mm. <clears throat> so, and if you are having this question now and uh, something that's in your consciousness now, maybe your soul is trying to tell you something. Yeah. So did you ever got into, I mean, when you went there, for a retreat, I mean, who knows that you're going to stay there for long so, and actually like yeah. live there. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what was the, what were you thinking? I mean, that's also Dharma, right? Like it's, 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 it's the universe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Master said, when I came here in Feb, my soul landed. That's what, that was his turn. I knew you were going to be back because your soul landed here in Feb. So, I don't know. Uh, It's like, you know, him saying that you were meant to be here. So, I I think all that, attending the retreat, you know, studying what I learned and uh, pursuing the other trainings that we are doing, Mm. then that that is leading me to, to my soul's purpose. Whatever my role is going to be in the whole grand scheme of things, um, I don't have that. Definitely yet, you know, but um, it is def- it, it will be something that will align with what is for the greater good of humanity. Yeah, but this is and life is- changing, right? This is life changing yes, for you, for sure. right? Of for course, sure. yeah. But I mean, you just did mention that you're you don't know yet the, what is the grand scheme or what is the grand plan, but do you have some sort of inkling on what is it? Why are you there? Um, Well, actually, there is a grand plan. And I think the spiritual masters know what the grand plan is. My What is going to be my role eventually Mm. in that grand plan? 
is still shaping up, I think. Yeah. So um, the, the I, I won't say I'm, I'm looking at uh, this, I'm, I'm in an office here and I'm looking at the poster that says yes. flying high with two wings, balancing duality. This is one of the key um, concepts of the ashram. Mm -hmm. And uh, Master says, with respect to living your greatest life on earth, you need to include two wings to fly high. And I'm reading from the poster. <laughs> the material success wing and the spiritual fulfillment wing. Anyone who only has one wing will live a life of struggle as they try to overcome setbacks. So his um, teaching is we need to combine spirituality and the material success. Yeah. So he said a lot of people pursue spirituality and end up being poor. Yes. Because they focus too much on spirituality and they don't um, uh, uh, focus on uh, their goals and their businesses. And then on the other hand, people become too material and forget about their spirituality. Mm. So they become greedy. Mm. They are only after profit and mm. they're not after what will be good, right? So what he's teaching is you can have both. Yeah. Yes. You can have yes. both. You don't have to be poor to be spiritual. Yes. You Thank don't. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's his core teaching. Wow. How do you balance? How do you create that balance of materialism and uh, spirituality? You know, I totally agree with you with that. Um, <laughs> like uh, with my mentor. This has taken on an entirely different track, right? Yeah, right. I know, I know. We're supposed to talk about, you know, meditation. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're going there. <laughs> but no, but that's okay. I think, you know, I think it is it is what it's meant to be, right? Yeah. If this is what needs to come out in this conversation, then it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> so I am too. This is beautiful. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I've been. I don't. I mean, okay. Um, the past few months as well, right? In this pandemic, I've also pivoted the business, and um, you know, like uh, what our businesses are, and you're just like yours. I mean, we all had to pivot online and all, and. I think if it weren't because of that paradigm shift also of thinking about, you know what, you can also have a rich life, whatever that definition is, by doing what is also good, that you can have both, by knowing that you can have both, but having to know what is the real reason on why you're doing this, it's not supposed to be greedy or selfish too, that it's okay to actually receive because that is the law of the universe. You have to receive in order for you to to give but you gotta receive mm -hmm. also what will equate that something that you're gonna give without asking for return and you know mm -hmm. i'm just amazed when that paradigm shift happened because you know money started to come in i never really thought i mean i've thought of it but i've never really thought i would experience it of wow there's such a thing as abundance and mm -hmm. not being poor or crawling to have that abundance and I love mm -hmm. when you said about I mean it's exactly it is like I always tell my mentees too that guys you can have both you are the only one who's limiting yourself and in order for you to give more and serve other people you also have to receive as well as much as we want to give what are you going to give if there's nothing for you to receive so I love yeah. that when you said about that and I think Meditation also played a huge role. And I want to talk to you about it because, I mean, we're talking about world meditation here. And I feel that, you know, I mean, every person I've been speaking with lately, I'm just I'm so happy. I just told you this a while ago. The majority of the people I've been speaking mm -hmm. with in this podcast, the first thing on their agenda is I meditate in the morning. I'm like, wow. It's wow. I'm like, wow. Thank you, Lord. I mean, yes, this is good. And it's not a woo-woo anymore. Um, but in terms of meditation, you are a mindfulness meditate a meditation teacher. You are in an ashram. Mm -hmm. It's such a different. I mean, yoga, meditation, sure, but I think you're in a much different path right now. Maybe you can walk us through what is meditation, what is mindfulness, and what is it like now that your practice is deeper than your yoga mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, 
yoga was actually my probably my one of the first steps or my entry level into yeah. <laughs> spirituality i would say but um now that i said that i i remember that i was just telling this story to my friend the other day hmm. but when i was in college i joined this organization in up uh, called the state varsity christian fellowship and that's where i got exposed to different religions and um you know something other than the catholic faith which is what i grew up with and was born into so i explored uh studying the bible um i went to doctrine classes i even got myself baptized with another church so i started going to protestant baptist christian reformed churches oh. and um looking back now i felt that was my uh, maybe the, my first uh Oh, step towards exploring the spiritual path yeah mm-hmm. that was my way of seeking and then um when i uh did teacher training yoga teacher training i got to learn about this um autobiography of a yogi book i think it was neil salang who recommended this and when i read this book um i actually felt that wow Jesus is more um real to me because you know I have a a very I I was I studied statistics in college and uh in statistics you know if you cannot replicate it it's so hard to prove that it's true right yes, so yes. an experiment needs to be replicable so that it can become credible the results can become credible because you can repeat it so in my mind if jesus is the only person and i hope that you know if you are a christian that you can uh, look at this with an open mind that if in my mind if if he's the only one who can do it do something like uh, multiply loaves of bread or walk on the wa- water or raise people from the dead or just do this materialization things if he's the only one who can do it para to me it can be a ano, question kasi how come you're the only one who can do it uh, of course christians will probably say because he's the only son of god right but when i read autobiography of a yogi and i found out that many gurus can actually materialize themselves appear from nowhere create you know just if you say you want food that the food will materialize there even walk on the water Then in my mind I said okay so others can do it then he must be true then it must not be you know false so it, that actually strengthened my faith my faith and then I read uh, the book Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh mm-hmm. I don't know if you know of that book that made me realize oh okay because I used to uh, uh, when you know when the catholics would say fear god that always created some kind of contraction in me and i'm like how can god be someone you need to fear mm. okay so because that is what we are taught right hala you know if you do something you know god will punish you blah 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 mm. that's how we are raised so when i read conversations with god and i saw a different perspective and i said this is the god that i believe in this is what i think of when i think of god So that sort of, you know, was I think my entry level into spirituality and then I became a teacher and then I I became um I learned about mindfulness and I became a mindfulness facilitator and uh, I practice my practice mindfulness meditation. So this part of my life um definitely changed the way I um I led people the way I managed connected and uh, dealt with people it made me um develop empathy maybe develop self awareness okay but that is um, just the first part so uh, what i learned here in the ashram is the path to enlightenment is a curriculum mm. you have to follow it's like going to school you know if you want your soul to be enlightened you have to study and do things mm. so and there are three parts you know self realization which is really this whole self awareness thing and knowing who you are your you know personality limits your ego your illusions etc and then there's the self development part 
mm. where you can develop the other aspects of your personality that are not fully developed yet. Mm. And then the last part is self-mastery, which mm. will lead you to the path of enlightenment. So this is the curriculum that we are following here in the ashram. So three steps. So self-mastery is what will lead you to enlightenment. And uh, the curriculum is um, saying that you don't have to wait for a long time to be enlightened, but you can get enlightened in this lifetime. Okay, so that is what I am working towards. Wow, that is beautiful. And hopefully I will have enough time because I'm already 62, right? So I don't know how many more years I have. Well, you don't look 62. I mean, age is nothing but a number and you're still very strong. I mean, when you actually shared that you're 62 already, we were like, what? Of course not. Are you kidding? Of course not, right? So, but I feel that there's just so much, you know, there was so much more in store in life. I mean, also for you um, because not only have you been in instrumental um, to the people that you've served, I mean, the people you've worked with, with us as well. I feel that, you know, now that you are in the ashram, I mean, I'm really, 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 really happy that you are in an ashram right now uh, because I think that this has always been, there's always this space in you that you've always wanted it. It's just that it's not out there. <laughs> um, but I'm happy that you did. And Ms. D, um, in terms of this, you know, I mean, in relevance, because I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here are listening, but Cassie, you know, we, I, I don't want to go to an ashram. Cassie, I don't want to, you know, all those things, right? I mean, okay, everyone, if you're listening, I mean, those who are listening right now, yes, we may be encouraging you to go for self-discovery, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go on an ashram to get and do that. Yeah. Miss D, I truly believe also that, entrepreneurship is one way of getting to know yourself and it's the best personality development you'll ever are going to get in your life. I mean, aside from, of course, self-discovery too. With terms of mindfulness and its relevance and now that you're in the ashram, what do you think would, you know, is, is you know, how do we pair them or marry both, you know, both practice to entrepreneurship and self-discovery? Yeah. Uh I think, okay, I'm going to go back to yeah. the two wings that Master was talking about, right? Yeah. The material and spiritual wing. So yeah. because we have this concept, again, that, you know, to be spiritual, you have to let go of the material stuff, mm -hmm. right? So Master also encourages uh, us to pursue our businesses. So in fact, I'm actually doing still my um, yoga plus roles here. So I've transitioned to being the chairman of Yoga Plus because I, J Jamie is now our CEO. Wow. But I still provide a lot of support from the back end. So, And um, I also have uh, my uh, mindful leadership coaching, which I also do online. I have just actually prior to this did uh, a one-hour workshop with an IT company on Search Inside Yourself, mm -hmm. for which I am a certified facilitator. And uh, I also have a young living business. Mm -hmm. Right, but at the same time, I'm also studying energy healing. Yeah, okay, so I'm amazing. about to complete an energy healing certification, which is offered here in the village, and this will be, I think, eventually part of my dharma. Yes. You know, to help entrepreneurs and leaders, because I realize with coaching, we can um, help um, with behavior change, for example. So we can uh, get to know ourselves better. And if we want to, we can, with mindfulness, be able to shift our behavior. But there are some things that uh, needs another tool, okay? So it's like, you know, if you have a Swiss knife, sometimes you use this tool, sometimes mm. you use another tool. Mm. So what, in, what um, interested me in energy healing is that there are some things that happen to us which may be caused by karma, for example. Go. Hmm. So. Okay. In your are car. you back? Am I back? Yes, you are. Yeah, I can't hear you, Lucas. I don't yeah. know why. You can type your questions and I will answer. Right. Okay. So I was talking about business and spirituality, right? So I'm 
all of these businesses and now I'm studying to be an energy healer. And I realized that uh, there are other parts or aspects of our life that may have contributed to our current challenges. And one of these things is your past, right? And the past of your family or your lineage. And um, you can have uh, problems that you know, are not even known to you, but were part of your great-grandparents. Maybe they did something in their lives that are part of what was transferred to you genetically and now it's em- impacting you in a way, you know, in a physical way, in a mental way, in an emotional way, you know, because we are energy beings. We see just our bodies, but we have auras and you know that as a yoga teacher, right? So you have your energy, aura, vitality, your, uh, empathy, your emotional aura. So. Let me just plug my computer. And these are themes that um, you know, we cannot, sometimes we are not aware of because they are not tangible. And, uh, and how do you heal, for example, a, a, a limiting belief, you know, or, or, uh, or a negative emotion that's been there for a long time. So this is where energy healing can come in. So I see that as being part of my toolkit as a coach Mm. so to help also um, entrepreneurs experiencing stress burnout sleep issues and how that can be healed through energy medicine or energy healing energy science so what What are are the the steps that people can can go through to heal yeah okay so in in the system of master delpe um there are um techniques that the healer can use mm-hmm. to help heal the past. So this is his philosophy. Heal the past, transform the present, and energize your future. All right. Okay. So um, how can you break can you break down <laughs> each step? Yeah, can you break Do you down? You want me to log out? Can you break down each step? Okay. Heal the past is really diff- about healing your karma. Healing your karma. So whatever happened in the past, either you did it, someone in your family did it, um, you know, uh, great grandparents, whatever your lineage. So that can be healed through the energy science to disconnect from that karma, to to break that. You can also heal the past through karmic karmic equity. So doing something positive. So let me tell you an example. I um, I wasn't always healthy, you know. I was smoking, drinking, um, eating, you know, a lot of bad stuff. Uh, when I was not into yoga yet, not into wellness yet. And that, of course, affected my body, right? So it caused damage to my body. But I stopped eventually. When I discovered yoga, I stopped smoking, stopped drinking, eventually became plant-based, right? So, but yeah, master said, okay. You stopped all that, so you're actually dealing with your future. So no more damage from cigarettes, from alcohol, from bad food, because you already started eating healthy. But what about the damage you did to your body when you were smoking and drinking, you know, and, and, you know, what you did to to your whole energy system? And now I'm paying for that. I feel the effects of those habits, and you need to heal that. Okay, so how do you heal from that when it's past? So he said, one of the things you can do to help, because you, I smoked for 17 years. And even if we heal it, he said, even if we heal it energetically, it's going to take time. Yeah, It will take a lot of time. Yeah. So what you can do is you also build, create positive karma towards that negative karma to offset it. So what you can do is help people with addiction. That's what he said. Okay. So as entrepreneurs and so leaders, help people with addiction. So that's how you can heal, heal the past. Okay. So as entrepreneurs and leaders, as how can we be better leaders? How can we be better leaders for the people we serve and for our business? And what's yes. the process? How can leaders start mindfulness and what is the long-term and short-term benefits? Yep. Um 
I believe it always starts. Where mindfulness is relevant is mindfulness helps build self-awareness. When we learn about mindfulness, when we apply it and we practice it, it helps to build self-awareness. We realize our um, shortcomings, our weaknesses. We realize our strengths. We can create our own SWOT analysis, you know, to find out how we can improve ourselves. Um, but I think it's just the first step, right? So, but it has already its benefits. So when we are more mindful, mm -hmm. we have more focus, we can be more deliberate, we can make better decisions. These mm -hmm. are the known benefits of mindfulness based on research. Mm -hmm. We can deal with stress better. We can have, uh, we, we are less reactive. We can take mm -hmm. the other person's perspective. We are more, we have more empathy, etc. So these are already known. There's a lot of research that uh, has been done on that for mindfulness. So that's a very, very good start already. Because I feel once we get to realize our um, own challenges as leaders, we become better at dealing with people. And this will include uh, people who work with us, yes. our clients, yes. our suppliers. Mm. So we, we become a better human being in the process. And that can translate eventually to, you know, a better way of doing business, maybe a more um, conscious way of doing business. So that is essentially what mindfulness leads us to, higher consciousness, more awareness, rather than doing things automatically, right? All right, so we have a little um, tech difficulty a while ago, but I'm tech glitch. <laughs> yeah, but thank you so much for, you know, for breaking it down to us on how can it be relevant and how can entrepreneurs or leaders, um, you know, um, incorporate mindfulness. And um, I was just talking to um, TJ Manotok um, a while ago also in terms of mindfulness. And he did told me also about how it actually helps in terms of your mental health. Um, and I feel that, you know, this is really something that we have to talk about, um, not, not just meditation in itself, but also as CEOs, leaders, I'm sure there's such a heavy load on your shoulders that you feel that or you think that everything is about the grind, everything is about the exit, right. everything is about, you know, the, the business and your bottom line and stuff. But Ms. D, as an entrepreneur yourself and as a CEO and being the, the, the we devil wears Prada before, <laughs> right? So how do you think um, can meditation help leaders in terms of decision-making, um, having empowered decisions or becoming better leaders for their bottom line and also for the operations? Yeah, so there's a lot of research that talks about how mindfulness meditation mm. actually helps to develop the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain mm. behind your forehead that has to do with decision making. Mm. So it is one of the parts of the brain that um, is uh, affected with mindfulness. We pay attention to something, which is really what mindfulness meditation is about. We pay attention to the breath. We pay attention to our eating. We pay attention to our walking. That is the part of the brain that develops, one part of the brain that develops. And that has to do with decision making and logic. So that means that that gets developed. So it will already benefit you as a business leader who makes decisions. And um, the other thing I think that leaders need to be aware of is um, mindfulness also makes you aware of your emotions. And emotions are is something that um, we tend to disregard or maybe not pay attention to in a workplace setting. No? You're a female uh, boss, a boss uh, girl, <laughs> lady <laughs> boss. And, uh, but I, I'm sure you also experience being a staff, right? Yes. And sometimes um, your emotions as a woman gets, gets attention in the negative sense. Like, mm -hmm. oh, she's emotional, maybe she has her period. Ah, because she's a woman, she's too emotional, and sometimes it becomes a disadvantage. Yeah. 
me go <laughs> yeah so yeah. with uh not realize emotions is very very important in decision making so we cannot make decisions without the emotional part of the brain that's how the brain works and so if we disregard our emotions then we cannot make good decisions so emotions you either you know the how your emotional pattern if you ignore your emotions if that is your pattern then you will not make good decisions so mindfulness will make you more emotionally aware and it will make you aware of your emotional patterns do you numb your emotion do you escalate it do you judge it do you ignore it do you downplay it or do you accept it mm. and just you know allow yourself to feel especially mm. now i'm sure a lot of ceos are suffering yes there's a lot of fear what's going to happen to my business mm. there's a lot of doubt mm. do i have enough skills knowledge to pull this company through mm-hmm. yeah and are you honoring that feeling that emotion are you even aware of what you are feeling and can you accept that you have this you know emotions that are present at the moment Miss D, you are a CEO, you're a chairman yourself, you have three, four businesses, you're running all these businesses. How does Dina Salonga do her decisions in terms of, now that you're practicing more mindfulness, what was the Dina Salonga before and who is the Dina Salonga now? And and now being an entrepreneur compared to being in corporate, what's the difference and what is your day like? And how how do you actually piece your, your, your decisions together? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that changed actually is uh, perspective taking. This is what mindfulness helped me do or learn mm-hmm. is to take other people's perspective. I was a very judgmental person. I still am. That was my autopilot. You know, I would mm-hmm. make a very good proofreader. I can mm-hmm. easily spot mis- mistakes. Yeah, you can just talk to people who work for me. I review proposals. They could hardly recognize their proposals because everything is in red (laughs) (laughs) with a lot of edits, right? So there's a good side to it, yeah, because I can really see and spot mistakes very, very easily. I'm very critical, very judgmental, yeah. But I became aware of that pattern and I'm working on um, not, not really subduing it but just being aware of when it kicks in that Mm -hmm. i'm very critical and to just allow for other people's um personalities Mm -hmm. to be part of the whole equation you know okay maybe it's because he or she is like this maybe this person is going through something let's find out you know why is performance like this what is this person going through Whereas before, you know, the Dina before, version one, will just say, <laughs> I don't care what's happening in your life. Just submit your whatever. Right, yeah. Submit your proposal. Do your... Yeah. Okay, yeah, just proposal. send your proposal. I don't care what's happening in your life. Because that's how I would do it, right? Hmm. I would submit my whatever deliverables when whether I'm sick or not, I will be there. I will be present. So I cannot accept excuses. But now I can see, you know, what other people will can be going through, what that they could be suffering, and that you know we could I don't know either change the situation, assign it to a different person, get things done, but not disregard what is happening with you or not disregard who or what you are perfect wow i mean that's true it comes with a lot of perspective but how do you draw the line between okay caring about what is this person (laughs) going through Mm -hmm. versus you still have to you know do the job you know there's the output so who is version three the dina version three now Um, I think the Dina version three is more, uh, more getting more enlightened every day. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so that's what Master said. You should be more enlightened today than yesterday. 
So each day is a learning process. Each day is a learning process. Uh, I will not claim to be, you know, the soup, like the Buddha kind of <laughs> enlightened, but definitely learning something new about myself, about life, about spirituality, about business, mm -hmm. and how I can bring all this together in a way that would help me fulfill what my soul was meant to do in this life. Thank you. That is so beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Ms. D. Uh, we're running out of time. I would really love to discuss more about mindfulness, but I think we have tackled so much today. And I hope, you know, I mean, I mean, I hope that our our listeners also um, <sighs> was able to download insightful, um, insightful thoughts from you and move them also towards a better practice. Um, it only takes, you know, everyone, I, I hope that you get to incorporate meditation. It only takes three to 10 minutes a day. Give yourself that gift to prepare yourself and be more in control. That mindfulness isn't really, I mean, it doesn't have to be complex. All you need really is to take a deep breath, take a step back and know, okay, what is happening in front of me? And just recognize and have that awareness of okay what is this I'm feeling is it logical is it you know what is it or why am I reacting this way so instead of being reactive let's try to be proactive now it does you don't have to be perfect there's no such a thing a perfect person but I hope you learned a lot from Miss Dina today as I did um, okay so do drop me a message um, on Instagram Cassie Pajarillo on what you picked up on today's episode and we'd love to feature you if you've got questions um, if you would want to also reach out to Miss Dina Miss D how are they going to reach you um, and uh, yeah tell us more about yoga plus and your plans yeah so you can reach me through at miss dines m-i-s-s d-y-n-e-s -S, on instagram i'm also on linkedin mm -hmm. yes alonga yep or yoga plus ph at yoga plus ph right so yoga plus virtual studio um, is delivering live uh, meditation, mindfulness meditation classes every Tuesdays and Fridays. It's part of the package if you subscribe to our live or recorded classes. So you can join us for mindfulness meditation sessions twice a week. Beautiful. Again, this is your chief encourager. Thank you so much, Ms. D, for being here. I'm your host, Cassie Pajarillo Braganza. Drive ambition, serve love, be awesome, and please breathe. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Ms. Dina, for being here. VIP and 90 is now open. I am accepting two mentees who would want to turn your network into high ticket clients with a plan. If you think that you are ready to launch your online business as a coach or a consultant, all you got to do is message me. Let's chat and see if you and I are the right fit. I'll see you then.